Welcome to the World Brief. The content of the briefing includes. One year to go, U.S. election race gets into gear. Nexperia sells Newport Wafer Fab to U.S. chip company for $177 million. Australia's Albanese may face anti-nuclear push at Pacific talks. Oleg Protopopov, who skated with his wife to Olympic gold, dies at 91. Biden and Bibi are at odds over fighting pause, endgame. One year to go, U.S. election race gets into gear. Financial Times. Former European Central Bank President Mario Draghi has warned that the European Union will not survive as anything other than an economic bloc unless it deepens its integration. Draghi has been tasked by the European Commission to prepare a report on how the EU can restore its competitiveness. Meanwhile, the US has said that Israel has no intent to reoccupy Gaza following its war with Hamas. This comes after the UN Secretary General blamed governments for runaway climate carelessness by failing to cut fossil fuel production, with 2023 set to be the warmest year ever after an exceptional October. In US political news, President Joe Biden will be cheered by Democrat wins in last night's clutch of state and local elections. The focus now turns to his possible Republican challengers at the third primetime TV debate in Miami tonight. Chief economics commentator Martin Wolf has argued that a win for Donald Trump in next November's election would be a blow for democratic norms at home, as well as abroad, weakening trust at a time when the world is racked by geopolitical tensions. Wolf also highlights the potential impact on global efforts on climate change, especially the possible reversal of clean energy measures in Biden's Inflation Reduction Act. Nexperia sells Newport Wafer Fab to U.S. chip company for $177 million. Financial Times. U.S. chip company Vichy Intertechnology has agreed to acquire Newport Wafer Fab for $177 million from Chinese-owned Nexperia, ending years of uncertainty about the fate of the U.K.'s largest chip firm. The U.K. government blocked the sale of Newport Wafer Fab to Nexperia on national security grounds in November 2022. Vichy said it planned to spend $1.2 billion to expand its global footprint over the next three years. Australia's Albanese may face anti-nuclear push at Pacific talks. Bloomberg. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is expected to face scrutiny over climate action and the nuclear submarine deal during meetings with Pacific Island leaders. The leaders are gathered at the Pacific Islands Forum in the Cook Islands, where concerns over nuclear policy have been raised. The host of the forum, Cook Islands Prime Minister Mark Brown, called for a review of the Treaty of Rarotonga, a nuclear-free zone treaty, to address the concerns of Pacific countries. Australia is a signatory to the treaty but is also in the process of acquiring nuclear attack submarines as part of the AUKUS deal. The agenda of the meeting is also expected to focus on climate change action. Oleg Protopopov, who skated with his wife to Olympic gold, dies at 91. New York Times. Oleg Protopopov has died at the age of 91. He is a former Olympic gold medalist in pairs figure skating and he and his wife revolutionized the sport in the 1960s with a balletic style. The couple went on to defect to the West and had a $2 million contract to skate on American tours with the Ice Capita. They wanted to skate for Switzerland in the Olympics in Nagano, Japan, in 1998 but were refused. Protopopov suffered a stroke in 2009 but said in 2014 that he and his wife still skated most days. Biden and Bibi are at odds over fighting pause, endgame. Washington Post. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has said that Israel should not reoccupy Gaza after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed that Israel would assume responsibility for Gaza's security for an indefinite period. The U.S. and Israel are at odds over whether and how to pause Israel's attacks for humanitarian reasons and who will govern Gaza after Hamas is eradicated. President Biden and Netanyahu publicly agree that Hamas should be removed from Gaza, but differ on how long the attacks should be paused and who will run the territory if and when the fighting stops. Netanyahu has suggested that Israel might have an open-ended role in Gaza after Hamas is removed, but Blinken maintains that reoccupation by Israeli forces is not the right thing to do. The US, Israel, and Qatar are discussing a plan for a three-day pause in which Hamas would free hostages, verify their identities, and deliver a list of their names. Blinken's comments come as the Israeli military has pushed into the heart of Gaza City and international calls for humanitarian pauses have increased. Albanese has pulled off a successful double act in the US and China, but what comes next? ABC. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has adopted a similar approach to China as his predecessor John Howard, focusing on areas of cooperation rather than disagreement. This approach has economic benefits, as trade sanctions are expected to be lifted soon, 
which will boost exports to China. However, there are concerns that this approach does not address China's aggression in the region, cyber attacks, and intellectual property theft. Albanese argues that engaging with China allows these concerns to be raised at the highest levels, but it is unclear whether China will take notice. Despite the recent rapprochement between Australia and China, China is becoming more aggressive in the South China Sea and has ambitions to control Taiwan. There is a fear of miscalculation, both in terms of a mishap at sea escalating tensions and China underestimating the resolve of the Biden administration to act. Albanese has managed to strengthen ties with the US while re-engaging with China, and both the opposition and the US are welcoming this engagement. Albanese is expected to attend the APEC summit in the US, where he will meet with President Biden and President Xi. France links conversation in Russian to star of David Graffiti. New York Times. French prosecutors are investigating whether a foreign intermediary was behind the painting of more than 200 blue stars of David on buildings in and around Paris last month amid a surge of anti-Semitic acts in Europe since the start of the Israel-Hamas war. The discovery of the stars, more than 60 were found in the 14th arrondissement of Paris on the morning of October 31, while others have appeared in two suburbs of the capital, shocked many in France, where anti-Semitism is a long-standing concern. French Jews have also been targeted by terrorist attacks in recent years. Matthias Dopfner argues that the global trading system needs a shake-up. Economist. The West must reinvent its approach to trade in order to escape the trade trap it has fallen into with totalitarian regimes, according to Matthias Dopfner, CEO of Axel Springer. Dopfner argues that the World Trade Organization, WDO, is part of the problem and should be abolished in favor of a more efficient system based on an alliance of democracies that meet three criteria, acceptance of the rule of law, respect for human rights, and robust carbon emissions targets. Countries that meet these criteria would trade tariff-free with other members, while those that do not would face high tariffs. China seeks to place J-10C fighter jets in shop window. South China Morning Post. China will showcase its J-10C fighter jet at the Dubai Airshow next week as it seeks to tap into the Middle East market. The J-10C, also known as the Vigorous Dragon, is China's first domestic advanced jet fighter and has attracted growing interest from Middle Eastern countries. Egypt has expressed interest in the J-10C as it looks to diversify its suppliers, while Algeria has purchased Chinese corvettes and missiles, and Saudi Arabia is reportedly in talks to buy unmanned aerial vehicles and air defense systems. China has emerged as an alternative weapons supplier by offering more affordable advanced weapons without political conditions. Former senior Chinese official urges return of foreign investors. South China Morning Post. Economic and trade bonds between the US and China remain the ballast of their relationship, said Beijing Chuan, executive vice chairman of Beijing-based China Center for International Economic Exchanges. By called on foreign investors to re-engage with China, saying that trade between China and the U.S. has continued to develop despite geopolitical tensions. Bai's comments come as there has been an increase in reciprocal high-level visits between Washington and Beijing, and three U.S.-China working groups have begun to carry out dialogues in preparation for a potential meeting between Chinese President Xi Jinping and U.S. President Joe Biden. Rising JGB yields lure Japanese life insurers away from U.S. treasuries. Nikkei Asia Nippon Life Insurance and Daiichi Life Insurance are increasing their purchases of long-term Japanese government bonds due to rising yields and high hedging costs associated with foreign bond investment. Yields on 30-year Japanese government bonds are currently at 1.8% to 1.9%, up from 1.2% in March. The life insurers expect yields to reach 2%, at which point they will accelerate their purchases. They are increasing their JGB holdings due to the difficulty of investing in U.S. treasuries and other foreign bonds because of hedging costs. International reaction to Gaza siege has exposed the growing rift between the West and the global South. Yahoo! The recent conflict between Israel and Hamas in Gaza has highlighted the growing divide between the global North and the global South. While Western countries, particularly the U.S. and some members of the European Union, have supported Israel during the crisis, many non-Western nations have been critical of this stance. Rising powers from the global south, including Indonesia, Turkey, Brazil, and South Africa, have been among the most vocal critics of Israel's actions in Gaza. The international response to the conflict reflects a broader trend in world politics, which has seen the fracturing of the established, US-dominated order. The growing influence of China and the fallout from the war in Ukraine have upended international relations and led to the emergence of a more assertive global south. The global south is increasingly able to speak with a unified voice on global issues, 
challenging Western dominance and highlighting the need for a more representative international order. This trend is likely to continue and may have significant implications for global governance and decision-making processes. Three MiG-29 fighter jet equipment smugglers apprehended in Major Sting SBU. Yahoo! Ukrainian authorities have arrested three people who are accused of attempting to smuggle equipment for MiG-29 fighter jets out of the country. The equipment had previously been stolen from the Motor Sitch company. The three suspects, who are now in custody, are accused of attempting to sell a batch of aircraft engine components to Asian buyers for around $87,000. Ukraine takes historic step towards EU membership amid war with Russia. South China Morning Post. The European Union, EU, has recommended that Ukraine be invited to begin membership talks, calling it a historic step and an important milestone for the country's integration into the West. The recommendation, made by the European Commission, is subject to approval by the 27 national EU leaders, who are due to decide in mid-December. The decision requires unanimous agreement, with Hungary seen as the main potential obstacle. If approved, formal accession talks with Ukraine are expected to begin next year. The process of joining the EU can take years and requires candidates to meet extensive legal and economic criteria. Draghi delivers downbeat outlook for EU economic growth. Financial Times. Mario Draghi has warned that the European Union, EU, is at risk of not surviving unless urgent political integration occurs. The former European Central Bank, ECB, president highlighted the need for a deeper union capable of implementing foreign, defense, and economic policies. He also expressed concerns about the EU's eroding global competitiveness, particularly in comparison to the US and China. Draghi stated that the EU's economic model, which relied on the US for defense, China for trade, and Russia for energy, is no longer viable. He emphasized the need for higher productivity and lower energy costs in Europe. And that's a wrap for today's news. Former ECB President Mario Draghi warns that the EU must deepen its integration to survive as more than just an economic bloc. Meanwhile, the US says Israel has no intent to reoccupy Gaza, but disagreements between the US and Israel over the fighting pause and the endgame continue. In other news, Australia's Prime Minister Anthony Albanese may face an anti-nuclear push at the Pacific Islands Forum, and former Olympic gold medalist Oleg Protopopov has passed away at the age of 91. Now, let's dive into some analysis. Draghi's warning about the EU's survival is quite a wake-up call. It highlights the need for the EU to address its competitiveness and strengthen its political integration. The US-Israel disagreement over Gaza brings to light the complexities of finding a solution to the conflict and the challenges of governing the territory. Albanese's approach to China and the US is an interesting balancing act, but it remains to be seen how effective it will be in addressing China's aggression and other concerns. And Protopopov's passing is a sad loss for the figure skating world, but his legacy will live on. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. What do you make of Draghi's warning and the challenges facing the EU? How do you think the US and Israel can find common ground on Gaza? And what are your favorite memories of Oleg Protopopov? Share your ideas, and let's keep the conversation going. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.